we're going through unprecedented times. We know that there, the pendulum that swung so fast and so hard in the last you know, four to six weeks will not return to the exact spot that it's going to. And we hear this from clients. We hear this from you know, businesses that we're surveying around the world, that they want to drive automation. They're going to be driving their businesses to the cloud in a much accelerated way than they ever have in the past. Uh, hello, everyone. We have the pleasure of welcoming Jay McBain uh, to our NGRT Engage interview series. I am Imtiaz Bellari from the NGRT team. Let's begin with a quick introduction of NGRT. NGRT is the world's leading multilingual no code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 25,000 bots, created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. We run the NGRT blog and video channel, which receives upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for a guest, Jay McBain is an accomplished speaker, author, and innovator in the IT industry. Named to the top 40 under 40 by the Business Review, top eight influencer by Channel Partners, top eight thought leader by Channel Marketing Journal, top 20 visionary by Channel Pro, top 25 newsmaker by CDN Magazine, top 50 channel influencer by Pinton, top 100 most respected thought leader by VSR Magazine, global power 150 by SMB Magazine, and top 250 managed services executives by MSP Mentor. Welcome, Jay. We are thrilled to have you. That was a very long intro, a lot of lists there, but uh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, we are very excited to have you. So, Getting to the first question, every industry is going into a subscription-based service model. So the point of sale is just a start. What role do you think conversational agents or AI can play in retaining and satisfying current customers? Yeah, we're going through a really interesting time now. And I work for Forrester Research, so we've got lots of different people looking at this from different angles. But you know, to sum it up, you've got every company in every industry kind of becoming a tech company. If you read the annual reports of the Fortune 500, they all look like tech companies today. And whatever they did in the past happens to be, you know, kind of their side job. Uh, out of that, you've got every service company becoming a tech services company. You've got people that are becoming more tech savvy, obviously, than, than ever before. But it's leading to new buying. It's leading to new, what I cover, channels and, and partnerships. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we're seeing a big swing at Forrester in terms of our research, in terms of how people buy, how they engage, this subscription model, which creates a customer journey that never ends, yeah. and how you manage that, and how you look at each of the customer moments. And one of the fastest growing areas is this idea of chatbots. Uh, as we're going through the COVID crisis right now, the number one feedback from customers of all the you know, thousands of things they're gonna to do to recover yeah. in phase two of COVID will be automation. You know, COVID happened to be a big failure on the human side of mm -hmm. many processes, workflows, customer experience, customer success, customer support, and companies are going to double down on their transformation strategies and really focus on those that are blocked or, you know, hindered by humans today. And, and we see it as a huge growth area and our customers and our clients and, and the world of business is telling us that that will be the fastest growing industry, at least for the next 18 months. Indeed. I think I definitely agree with you. So moving on to the next question, you have developed an innovative Dandelion marketing approach. Could you please uh, elaborate on this? How do you think today's digital era is contributing to its effects? Yeah, it's a great question. So in, in the Dandelion approach, it was really this idea of, you know, in your backyard, you may have these Dandelions growing. And for millions of years, they've kind of grown the same way and they send out a bunch of seeds and, you know, your backyard turns yellow over a, over a term. They don't know which seeds are going to plant. They don't know how much wind there is, how much rain, how much moisture. That means there's thousands of variables that they don't control. So rather than, you know, making every seed better and increasing the chances of each seed by 10%, it has never evolved past this idea of, you know, kind of quantity. Uh, in, in terms of spread. So 
the same analogy is made in marketing, where, you know, in my world, in the channel world, there's 54 magazines that people read. There's 64 podcasts that they listen to. There's 24 association. There's 10,000 vendors. There's distributors. There's 150 trade shows that they'll be back going to after, um, after we're done with social distancing. So there's so many variables that for a company to do a good job in marketing today, it has to be a dandelion approach or it has to be a community-based approach, understanding what people read, where they go, who they follow, and being able to leverage these influencers and super connectors and leverage all these different aspects. We spent too long in marketing thinking that people are going to come to us, build it and they will come. You know, your website's important, your eBooks, your white papers, your webinars, your podcasts are important, but they're only a very small element and that seed may not plant. So you got to focus 80% of your efforts inside the community and getting your message on other people's platform. True, true, definitely. Okay. How do you see teams uh, leverage technology to optimize their channel partner management and strategies? It's a good question. I published something called the Channel Software Tech Stack. And there's 106 companies today that build channel software. And that's everything from managing your channel, marketing to, through, and with your channel partners, incenting them, motivating them, drive loyalty, the channel data, enablement, onboarding, right down to finance and, and, and quoting and everything else. So it's a really big market. And 75% of world trade goes indirectly. So these yeah. are the companies that are really building the technology to allow you to have a growing ecosystem of partners and be able to serve those ecosystem in an automated way, like we talked about. Removing, in many cases, the human elements, like spreadsheets and manual tasks from yeah. such big networks. True. Sure. Very exciting. Uh, if you are looking at a crystal ball, what are the upcoming channel trends you see in the next 12 months or so? Yeah, so every year I write uh, a trends piece, and I did write 10 of them this year in terms of what's coming. But, you know, there is a new buyer that has mm-hmm. been changing uh, almost every industry. There is a move to, for example, marketplaces that mm-hmm. change in terms of how buyers transact. And, you know, the use of chatbots, the use of AI will be massive in terms of marketplaces. Uh, There's been a change in terms of ecosystems. 76% of CEOs around the world, and this was Accenture research, Mm -hmm. said that their current business model will be unrecognizable in five years. The number one reason is ecosystems. So just to give you an example, if you build forklifts today Mm -hmm. and you add an Internet of Things device to it, Okay. No longer are you really a forklift company. You're more of a data company or more of a tech company now. And your new partners are going to, going to include Microsoft and AWS and Google, you know, maybe Salesforce. I mean, you're going to build a tech ecosystem. You're going to be delivering the construction company, the builder, the architect, a thousand data points per second. Yeah. So five years from now, it's not going to be how big or fast or powerful your forklift is. It's going to be how you integrate into the project, how you integrate into the broader technology stack to drive better efficiency, to drive better management of that particular industry. So the CEO of that forklift company is no longer thinking about their dealer channel the same way. They're no longer thinking about, you know, each feature function benefit of each one of their models. They're more thinking about now is how they service the new customer, the new buyer, how they get into new opportunities by delivering more value than for the last hundred years what that forklift has delivered. True. Yeah. Yes. Again, I think that's, those are very good points that you made. Um, Moving on. How do you believe the world of automation, conversational intelligence and AI will change the way we work or either acquire business or service our customers in the future? Yeah, it's, it's a major change. So when I mentioned the new buyer, they spend 68% of their time digitally before ever talking to a salesperson. So in this digital method today, they're trying to, you know, 81% of them may start with a Google search, mm-hmm. but they're reading every ebook, they're listening to every podcast, they're digging into every association, they're doing everything in their power to become educated, to become an expert in terms of solving their own problem. And there is a huge opportunity. I think we're maybe in the first or second inning of a baseball game here. 
in mm. terms of where AI and bots uh, can help automate that early part of the journey. And we know that 73% of those buyers actually make vendor selection before ever talking to a salesperson. Wow. So we have, com- we have big vendors now that are losing deals without ever knowing there was a deal. Mm. And so having the automation there, guiding customers, when you think about it, and I've done the counting, when you look at the, for example, 10 line of business buyers inside the average company, when you look at the 297 sub-industries that buy, I talk about forklifts inside construction. When you look at the geographies, you know, 206 countries and all of the states and provinces within, when you look at the sector size and segment of the buyer, are they an SMB? Are they mid-market? Are they enterprise, government? Where are they? And then finally, the solution stack. If you're buying technology, for example, there's 40 different layers of the tech stack. So if you multiply all five of those vectors together, there's 35 million potential solutions mm-hmm. out there in the marketplace. There are no companies that are going to hire 35 million salespeople and write 35 million ebooks. Correct. But when you get that buyer who's looking for a particular forklift in a particular geography to work on a particular job site, when you get down to that narrow part of the conversation, the automation or the AI can actually guide the customer and pave that last mile for them. And working with channels of different types, influencers and others, uh, this will be really what the mid innings of the baseball game are going to look like. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, what are your thoughts on the future of sales pertaining to AI? How do you eventually see sales tech play a role in the future of a sales profession? Yeah, well, I think I just paved it with the previous question. So in, in many cases, a salesperson will need to become a digital salesperson and understanding that you know, the actual demo, the actual sales call, the actual funnel, the actual journey that the customer's on to buy something is radically changing in front of them. So as a salesperson, as, as a good salesperson, you're going to be start to think and get obsessed over that first 68% over the journey. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get obsessed over getting customers in your territory, you know, engaged with AI and, and bots and chatbots early so that you get visibility to it. And, you know, perhaps you can add value in that you're not going to be in the room, but you can definitely influence that room or influence the influencers. The average customer may use upwards of five channel partners in that early part of the journey. So if you're influencing those five and they're mentioning your name, your company's name through that early part of the journey, when it gets to vendor selection, even though you've never had a sales call, your chances of winning using AI and influencing the influencer have just gone up exponentially. True, true. Very good points, I think, and I definitely agree with you. And finally, one last question. Any other sound bites that you would like to leave to our viewers with? Yeah, I mean, we're going through unprecedented times. We know that there, the pendulum that swung so fast and so hard in the last you know, four to six weeks will not return to the exact spot that it's going to. And we hear this from clients. We hear this from you know, businesses that we're surveying around the world, that they want to drive automation. They're mm-hmm. going to be driving their businesses to the cloud in a much accelerated way than they ever have in the past. You know, there is gonna be a more distributed, the future of work changes, I I think forever. It doesn't go to where we are now, but it doesn't return to where we were. There is going to be some happy medium of where it lands. And these technologies that we talked about today are gonna be critical in terms of serving this new world. And the companies that get on this the fastest, you know, the channel partners and the channel vendors that that I work with, uh, the faster they can get into channel process automation as opposed to RPA or BPA, CPA, Mm. uh, Mm. and start having these conversations and deliver these to customers, those are going to be the winners. All right. Thank you very much. I think that was a very great interview and very good points. I hope it really helps our viewers and adds a lot of value. Thank you very much once again, Jay. All right. Thank you so much.